Okay, that's a very good question. Um, and I think it's quite a difficult question to answer at the moment. Um, we've had, I mean, the, over the past three years since the, uh, the COVID pandemic, it's, uh, you know, the, the normal relationship between payments and insolvencies and the economic position of the uh, UK and Ireland has kind of, kind of got, turned, turned on its head. Normally, we would expect to see, you know, when there's a drop in output, a drop in demand, that we would see an increase in solvencies. And that hasn't happened. In 2022, the relationship is starting to get back, back a little bit towards where we've, uh, where we've seen previously, but we still feel that there is uh, there's a bit of a way to go. There's a lot in the press in the UK at the moment about insolvency rates being at historic highs, you know, well in advance of uh, you know, where they were pre, pre-pandemic. But we don't think that's necessarily a true reflection of where we are at the moment. Uh, we think there's actually quite a lot of potential upside growth uh, in insolvencies and, uh, and potential bad debts. Certainly on numbers, um, you know, talking on behalf of Nexus Trade Credits and the, uh, the figures that we've seen over the past, uh, the past 12 months is that things are definitely going in an upwards direction. H2 was significantly uh, increased on H1 uh, in terms of claims and uh, claims numbers and claims volumes and where we see overdues which are a really good lead indicator about what we can expect over the six months they're probably running 20 to 30 percent ahead of where where we were this time uh, this time last year or even this time six months ago so overall I don't think it's a huge commitment to say that we expect claims to increase um, but it's just to the extent that that's going to happen, that which remains, uh, remains to be seen. We've had a few false dawns uh, and we don't, want to, uh, we don't want to presume anything until we actually see it in the numbers. Again, a very, very difficult question to answer at the moment. Normally we would expect there to be, in times of increasing claims, to see increasing premiums, increasing rates and reduce risk appetite across the, uh, the market. However, uh, certainly within the UK and Ireland at the moment, coming off the back of three strong years, loss ratio wise, um, I mean really st- like surprisingly strong uh, loss ratios, um, we, um, we aren't seeing the upturn in premium rates. The speed in which rates are being pressured is, is down a little bit compared to last year, but rates at the moment are showing no signs of uh, bottoming out. Risk appetite is good, and actually it's a really good time for, uh, for anybody who's thinking about insurance or perhaps think, have insurance in place at the moment and are thinking about stopping insurance. Now is actually a very good time to, to buy the products and to get good policy premium and to get good coverage on their, uh, on their key buyers, especially as we head into a period of fairly significant uncertainty. Traditionally, the largest sector where we tend to see claims and we see pressure is in the construction area. Certainly true in the UK and especially true um, in Ireland, certainly 2008. Um, if we look back at those at that at that kind of time, and in fact, even over the past the past 10 to 15 years, we always see a good flurry of construction uh, construction claims. You know, it's just one of those industries which is a little bit messy in terms of supply chain and subcontractors, um, and we tend to have a history of bad debts, which means that they tend to insure, and we probably, compared to the economy as a whole, we probably are more overweight than compared to, say, the services, service sector or um, you know, some of the pharmaceuticals, you know, it, you know, those kind of sectors which don't traditionally insure. So at the moment, we, we, I think we are certainly feeling an effect from insolvencies over the second half of, of 2022. Um, we're really feeling the effects of input price inflation and jobs which were probably priced up at 2020 um, costings have now gone through the cycle and we're getting to the point of um, finalising contracts, finalising payments and the significant shortfalls. Add to that and there's a real lack of investment across, certainly in the UK, I wouldn't necessarily put Ireland in that boat, but uh, UK investment's been really poor over the past few years and continues to be so. Um, but with the lack of investment coming in, means there's a lack of future orders coming in as well. So under uh, underperforming jobs, at the same time as no new work coming in, is causing more than the fair share of uh, construction contractors to fail. 
if a contractor goes, that then goes down the uh, down the supply chain uh, through their sub through through the subcontractors and into uh, into the building supplies. So that's always at the forefront of what we're doing, uh, what we what we look at as a sector. Outside of that, there's been a, a lot of press around people like you know, the ho the uh, hospitality sector, for instance. I think pub insolvencies in the UK were uh, were up 80% last year. I don't know if it's the same for Ireland. Maybe they still have more of a drinking culture than uh, than we do in the UK. Um, but hospitality restaurants were again kind of 60 70 percent ahead of uh, where we were um, last year in terms of insolvencies you know from a mixture of consumers tightening their purse strings um, higher input costs higher energy costs um, everything's hitting them all at once so that's a sector which we are seeing significant issues with retail is the other big one for um, for the uh, both UK and Ireland and that's quite a bit more of an interesting one. It's a bit, a bit more nuanced. You know, probably five or six years ago, it was all about bricks and mortar retailers and the march of internet retailers taking over. And over the past six to 12 months, we've seen more internet retail failures where things like additional costs on shipping or energy costs or dropping off in consumer demand or consumers trying to, uh, you know, ordering stuff online and then sending it back. And the costs associated with that have really, uh, have really accelerated. So we've started to see more and more internet retailers failing, which is, uh, you know, across clothing, across furniture, across the, uh, you know, the, the guys on the mopeds that <laughs> go around delivering takeaways to people. Anything retail-based uh, that isn't tr traditional bricks and mortar has been suffering. I'm sure there are some sectors which are still doing well and there's still a lot of opportunities within, within different sectors, but everybody's got challenges at the moment.